Oh, list mystery, oh, list mystery, fuck you, 2020. Excitement is real, kids. Finally, a year so universally wonderful for music. To have this list is a joy, which is why I got this out so quickly. Most years, there's a rift in the list between good and great songs, and that'd be the top four. This list could have been a top 15 with some brutal cuts. Thank you, 2020. I'll miss you, man. I did not just say that out loud. Musically, 2020 gave it everything it could. It was almost like artists had some kind of extra time to create. It was a great year for rap and R&B. And not just because Cleveland 1061 entered my station rotation. I found myself enjoying many of the songs in passing. Harlow, Roddy, hell, even 50 Cent. Wu would have guessed. Huh? Yeah? Oh, you loved it. Don't lie. Then there were the throwbacks. Not just from the old folks still making it this late into their careers. Even the youngsters were building a sound around tropes and styles of the past. I'm actually not sure who comes to mind with that. Hmm. Even with nostalgia in play, 2020 felt like a year where the charts were pandering to my likes. Strong female titans collecting hits. Weird Ohio alt-rock band taking advantage of the times. Heavy focuses on production over mediocre lead artists. I was a happy boy, especially for that part of the year where I got to listen to music at work. Now I'm just dumb old salaried management. Dumbass. Sometimes I have to stand around for 20 hours a week. I only get paid for 27 and a half. I don't know how I make it. I really can't stress just how good a year of pop music it was. Every song, including most of my honorable mentions, were fives. Out of fives! We'll be leaving this year without a single regret for liking any of these songs. It was impossible to go wrong. Unless you're a Bieber or AJR fan, but those don't exist. Their fans are streaming bots, clearly. What the fuck am I waiting for? Let's be happy for 45 minutes. Ain't got a care in the world, but got plenty of the top 10 best songs of 2020. You get it? Because TikTok? Whatever, number 10. Sometimes a song needs the journey to get into a list. Some of my favorites are the discovery at the end of the year to make sure I didn't miss anything. Motivation just kept trying to break its way into my rotation until I had to give in. Cool for the summer I outright hated out of the gate, and it ended up being a top five of the year almost as good as this one. All of those hassles brings us to this list's original number nine. Right now, that song's just not good enough. So with the honeymoon phase for one of the grosser vending machine choices over, it looks like that number 11 in the honorable mentions will get to make the list after all. Guys, it made it. Just let me adore you. As much as a song can bother me until I'm physically unable to have those initial negative thoughts, Adore You was too good to deserve my contrarian tendencies. Being the automatic radio skipper slowly stopped happening. Then I started singing along. Then it showed up on my rock band set list. With an audible like this, I'm rolling without my outline. So I may need to be carried by the majestic artistry of a fresh god among men. It was samey and fine for six months. And when it clicked, it wasn't just seeing it as a new positive. This was a song I never heard before. It was the true titan song of longevity. Keep your boring ass circles. I want a song that doesn't hold me in a beige loop. We lived through a year of endless boredom. Why should I accept music that does the same? Don't get me wrong, circles is fine. Adore you is feelings. Take Dynamite for example. Good song, but that's where it ends. Listening to Harry here is like he's speaking to my soul. And he can't be. I'm a dude. What a little sugar high. But these sweeping stanzas and dream-filled imagery just floors me. I'm flying. And it goes along with Harry staking his claim firmly as the rock man. Helpfully, I might add, keeping the dream alive. Brown skin. That wonderful decor of an electric guitar, an honest kit with multiple variations, and a synthesizer-enhanced bass to slap. If you haven't experienced this magic with a quality pair of headphones, you really are missing a dreamy experience. So good. Again, rock band. Oh, God. 
I'm so bad. Harry's charisma and cult slots him into this production like the true rock leaders of the past 50 years. Kind of like Meatloaf, which I'm sure he's going for, especially in the looks department. But seriously, Adore You is the once in a generational sweeping love tune to rival any song in a given year. And 2020 was so good, it's only number 10. Yikes. Number 9. As I may have just stated, Harry and I would like to tell you about an unfortunate musical phenomenon known as the headphone parable. The high fidelity sound from a decent set of headphones is sometimes not present, i.e. radio. Put it into your head, it's the best piece of music ever. The application of this concept comes heavily into my number 9, a song that I assumed wasn't going to make this list as it did this summer, because a year this good has trucked a good amount of the songs out of the top 10. Oopsies. In your eyes. I just thought it was glorious in passing. Installed directly into my ear holes, this is a song to be reckoned with. Every instrument has the room to mesh and shine. Guitars flowing through the bloodstream. A wonderful sax solo that made even Kenny G want a piece of the action. That guy keeps attaching himself to stuff I like recently. It's just generally good musicianship. And then there's the bass line. 2020 had some goddamn good bass lines, and this just joined that parade of the best music had to offer. It moves, the way the subject is shattered by the weekend's actions. But Heartache just sounds so good. If the video or album didn't make it obvious, these lovely songs are juxtaposed by a protagonist fighting both internal and external demons, and all I can do is feel for the guy. He's made me such incredible music. The least I could do is feel for the 80s slasher villain. No! This nostalgia trip of a video is very emblematic of In Your Eyes, especially with the synths replicating Grandmaster Flash. Yeah, that's about it. Great performances all around, authentically induced nostalgia to the fun genres of the past, and a weekend delivery and feel for the ages. If you have more to add, Pause the video and tell them to me right now. Great observation. Number eight. As I haven't said at all ever, I was born and raised in the CLE. Well, kind of near the CLE, just about as middle of nowhere and in close proximity to a metropolis as possible. So rural white guy fighting the conventions of my lame ass hometown. Obviously, and it goes without saying, I'm a huge Eminem fan. Well, huge in terms of never being that. I don't know. He was real fun when I was 12, and his edginess actually resonated with my phase of life where every third word had to be an obscenity. My middle school rap phase also coincided with this. Pretty sure that's when I started questioning pop music altogether. Thanks, Em. Loved being a stuck-up prick during my youth. More like C-rap, am I right? I'm sorry, that was a joke from my boomer parents. Therefore, my relationship with Nem and his music has been pretty detached. Thought I hated Berserk, which I don't. Liked a few songs here and there, ignored most of them. This was one of my worthless cuts for this year. More like songs to murder your will to enjoy music to. And then, there's Eminem's best song of the last 20 years. I can swallow a bottle of alcohol in a Not very often does my end of year pass through the top 40s for every week yield a best list entry, but sometimes I miss something too fucking good to not revolve my life around. I heard praise for it and thought, it can't be that good. Godzilla transfixes me in a way a song never has before. My brain gets turned into this receptacle only capable of enjoyment. It basically starts and ends with that beat. If I haven't given thanks to DaBaby yet, Suge has done more to set up a trend of bouncy yet stomp-inducing basslines that melt my brain. 
and me likey mad bass lines. See, it's crafty in the way it crawls up there and infects your consciousness. It's the nicotine of music, and God, I want more! Down, they can spit the shit's hilarious, it's time to put these bitches in the obituary. And right as you get comfortable with this filling, yet sparse production, it takes this angelic build to come around the start of the third act. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The crescendo is made possible by the two leading artists. The production was intentionally this way, because complimenting M is hard enough with a presentation as sharp as his. Not scientifically sharp, more like a serrated knife sharp. It's the articulation. It's the space between words. It's an actual generational talent storing some potential bars for the right time. Some of the fucking finger, finger, prostate exam. And awkward moments and dad jokes like that don't slow the overall pace because he just keeps moving forward. Maybe that was pathetic, but now I'm handing out flyers, which is the best apparently? What's a flyer? The thing I got pulled around in at the county fair when I was four? Every good Eminem moment comes with an awesome and equal compliment in the production. The explosions that add texture, the different meter he uses that fits the syncopation perfectly, and snappy percussion sliding into the third act. But I'm so far ahead of myself, my body is in the rearview mirror. There's still Jared. Monster, you get in my way, I'm gonna feed you to the monster. This is my favorite Juice performance. And yes, I'm not going to front and call myself some kind of expert on the guy. But the sample size is only provided childish, forgettable, or deceptively catchy. But here, it's just... Fire. Joke intended, it's actually a fascinating chorus. Some of Jared's lines are stacked on top of each other like the way commentary YouTubers layer in quick cut audio to keep the pace up. Like ice road I look like a villain. It works surprisingly well, and with this and come and go, I think the music industry did a good job to honor his memory. And while that other one could have had a better producer, which Juice overpowered to goodwill, he has the right move for M's Twilight Masterclass. That and being a self-destructive monster is both wrong and dramatic perfection simultaneously. Anyways, I think we can talk about it now. With the venom and eliminate him. Other words, I'm enemy. I don't want to hurt him. So, uh, he does this for a long time. I'm beginning to feel like I'm mentally ill. I'm a killer, be killed. I'm a killer, be the vanilla. A really long time. And of course, it's impressive. It's always been that. The man is a professional, a rap god, per se. It's just, it's put together in this magical song that I lose my mind consuming. God damn, Zilla. I got a trailer full of money and I'm paid it full. I'm not afraid to pull them. Man, stop. Number seven. I'm throwing caution. Cleveland was brought to its knees in 2020 when the fuckers at iHeartRadio killed off the only FM mainstream alt rock station. Luckily, a new station, Jenny 1073, popped up and moved from modern adult contemporary to take its place. It was a dynamic station and the proper successor to something so wonderful. While I do miss the classic staples to the genre that 991 had, I'm just happy it's here. So you know that alt-rock that makes the Billboard Hot 100 and becomes a number one hit is gonna make this list. Yeah, genres are a dead meme. Why you always in the mood? A guitar is the only thing about this that could make this anything close to alt-rock. Is Rockstar also alt-rock then? Brand new lemon those are like the arpeggios of Hysteria by Muse, so yes, everything is alt-rock now. WAP is alt-rock. Fuck it. I think the reason I'm still hearing it on Jenny is because they still have the rights for it when they were a pop station. Hell, I don't think Dance Monkey is an alt-rock song either, but I'm still gonna take it. It's another station playing a great song. Mood is my representation of good pop music. It's so catchy, sticks to the brain, forces a good old car sing-along. It's timely. If I don't bring up Rockstar 40 times as a trend maker, the same offbeat bass perfected into a more brevious, yes, that's a real word and not a name package, making the song gone and over too quick. It's too 2020. 
I mean, I didn't really need to ask why I was always in a mood. Why you always in a mood? Maybe you find it pissy. Maybe you find it self-righteous. But I find it fresh. We always have to be happy and together and optimistic. And if we're not, we're telling each other to fuck ourselves. Instead, let's have it both ways. Two dudes pissed at chicks have never sounded so good. Well, unless you're belly aching about plagiarism. When I start to fill out the task. Wow, he sounds like Juice World. But the instances where he's more focused and happy to be performing? Gross! Angel vs. Devil. Ian Dior vs. Trevor Daniel. One of these is a copycat, tasteless middle finger to decency. The other is a frustrated mentality of a kid. One is inexcusable, the other is blameless. Do we have to live in that world where everybody should be criminally responsible for being similar to another artist? They're both kids. Of course they're gonna sound close. Get mad at TD, who instantly proved that the juice imitation was intentional. Dior is fine. He serviced a wonderful production. It's not top five, so let him have this. Come on, don't make that cute face sad. Besides, I'd be in creative jail too if everybody in the same vein couldn't have a similar style. What am I in for? Being a Todd ripoff. And in the Todd vein? We play games of love to avoid the depression. High caliber two seconds of pop music. Congrats if you haven't been there. But the despair of loneliness does create bad mood scenarios, like dating one person five times over a nine year period. As a love expert, don't do that. What's great about it is it's just two kids with an enjoyable song about being dissatisfied. Sounds like 2020 to me. Number six. We're having fun, right? Best songs of the year, enjoyable stuff to talk about. Let's put an end to that. I got everything I new year, new list. Therefore I am talking about Billy again. See what I did there? That song is whatever, but this, fuck me up. I mean, she should not be this experienced at this age. It's, it's unbelievable the talent that oozes from that girl. And just like, I know that it's like a depressive time and like everything's hitting the fan and it's, it's really bad, but like she's always just there for us, just saying exactly what we're feeling. And, and like, maybe it's not something I feel, but it's just so good. I mean, she won all those Grammys. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's, she's a kid. She's a kid. She's got two full length LPs and she's just so well classifying all these things together and just making this vivid picture that no one else could have pulled off. And she's what, fucking 19, 20? God, what was I doing at that age? Kids thrown out of places? Fucking taking care of too many cats? Like, wisdom's one thing, but like, I, I just don't understand feeling these ways or what she was going through. I mean, like, I, I've never been depressed in my life. I'm just... What do I know? Even at her happiest, it's like... She's just dying. It's a nightmare. Maybe I should have asked more questions. Maybe I should have been there more. I could, I could have tried to understand what was going on. You know, you're you're just happy, and you're in love, and you just you just don't you take those moments for granted. And and in the end, this is this is it. That this is what it was like. Even the family, she's got this brother who's just like genius. He fucking just he captures it too. You know uh, what? He's still like five years younger than me, also, and he's just the world's his oyster. He's just crushing it with this 
good sound and stuff. What have I done? I'm a part time supervisor. <sighs> yeah, I'm I'm happy. It's it is what it is. I, I I thought I did everything I could. I I was there. I continue to be there. And then one day, she's just gone. I mean, Whiteout was the best flavor. And they just took her away. How how could Pepsi do this? How could... How you did this? You took away my Mountain Dew. Number five. 2020 was a year of things. We had things in our lungs. Things on our minds. Things getting a sequel of sorts. Most of the things were terrible, and terrible in unforeseen quantities. Things in the throats of the singers we let be popular. It was times like these that made me thankful that it was the year of Roddy Rich. Sometimes it wasn't deserved. Still have no idea what you're supposed to get out of this. Keep a glockin' when I ride in a suburban. Uh, he was a little better here. A little bit young thug light, but passable enough. I wanted to see what people were truly losing their minds over. And it turns out he made it very clear in the one song that underperformed like crazy. We needed a little mundane love song. And since we couldn't get anything out of the actual couple or the wildly famous out of touch people, we needed the guy on fire to save us. And save us he did. If we have in the beans, is that okay? Let's go for a stroll. Not pretending that he's anything more than the comfy presence he is. This was the comfort food equivalent to music. It's the exact thing you need, and it fills you up with feels. You know I like when you ride at the top, babe. Right? Smooth lines paired with mustard's smoother feel is more inviting than COVID into a millennial's lungs. We're just living for the moment. The discussion to be had about high fashion is how Mustard took a song that could have been easily forgotten and turned it into a genre-defining jam, heard by all. Well, heard by some. If you can picture this song without its credited producer, it's above average. Roddy's lines are nice. I don't think you need me to read over a Google result for lyrics. You know the highlights. We've all swooned for the boys' game, even as a big ol' hetero myself. But Mustard's perfect match cannot be overlooked. Nah, nigga, can't us a call cause I'm balling. There was even a trial run. Balling was alright. Slightly mistitled, but the groundwork was there. Same key sustains, same percussion fills, but instead of about Roddy's incredible prowess, it's about his vulnerabilities. If I got a feeling, I keep it inside my heart. Beats match his pace, slow and full over a methodical chorus, more intense hi-hats with a breakneck pace of the verses, all completely adorable. But let me tell you, I like you a lot, babe. If you can't appreciate one of the best songs made this year, forget it. Forget it! Incredible moments and feelings in the most overlooked song of the year, such as life. Number four. We live in an age where nostalgia is a commodity, and for good reason. Most remakes and reboots don't understand that the feeling comes from reliving the past and not having young Dwayne cast in the main role. The best example I can give you is sitting and waiting for Super Bowl 50 to start and a Taco Bell ad came onto the screen. Good news for people that have credit problems. This man advertised his furniture store at 1 a.m. during Soul Train on Saturdays when I was 10. And seeing his face on my MacBook Pro at age 22 melted my brain into a soup of warmth. There is no substitute for genuine nostalgia. Therefore... Train on me. Amplitude 2004 is still one of my favorite games of all time, and it had this song called Cool Baby by DJ HMX in plural. It's a crappy song that was one of my least favorite in the game, but it had one very strong, endlessly memorable silver lining. Then 16 fucking years later, here it is again in a number one pop song. And it all came back. 
The rush of flying through an electronic world of the future. The colors, the traversal, the journey, all perfectly captured in this one tune. If you want nostalgia, Lady Gaga is your perfect maestro. No, I didn't. I didn't say it. I didn't ask for a free ride. Nobody, and I fucking mean nobody else, could have made this happen. Her power, her music savvy, to slot into a piece so spectacular. God, even without the production, this is a top tier Gaga song. But at least I'm alive. Against Stupid Love, it's not even close. And I'm one of the six people who actually liked that song. Rain On Me just made its existence superfluous. Not even an honorable, because this is just that much better. And don't tell it this, but 2020 was too good for it. You'll hurt its feelings. This though, every second, all about it. Now, why is it number four? Do you remember what I said about Sarah McLachlan and God Rest Ye? She's fine. Nothing disagreeable. Her lack of presence is only apparent when smacked right against Gaga. And it's right back to power. That cap on her vocals makes her outclassed. Again, she's not bad. She's just... Rain on me, tsunami. Not as great as Gaga. I'm not gonna front. That is the second worst moment of pop music of the entire year. It's pretty bad. It's not as bad as... It emphasizes how together this song is, from where it lightens up and puts forth its greatness. Every damn lead into a chorus. Rain on me. Even Ariana, proving her worth through ad-libs. Rain On Me is so good, it managed a top five spot in a year so good, the worst lists looked like parodies. It made the album it came from look like a promotional tool for its own success. And a song so good, it earned a top five finish. No Olympic hardware, but great hope for the future? Well, good luck, you two. Number three. Wow, it's so good! Better than Take On Me! The fuck you just say to me?! There is gallons of praise that I, and I'm sure other people who don't get writer's block, have placed on the most universally liked song of the last five years. But let me quickly remind you that Take On Me is untouchable. Here, I'll synthesize it as though I've never talked about it before. The Weeknd is a better artist than AHA, without a question. The album Take On Me Comes From is a little junky. But with After Hours consistency comes this unspoken expectation of quality. Blinding Lights is amazing. Take On Me puts you in a rocket, flies you to the moon, becomes a member of your family, and delivers your eulogy when you die. Get the fuck out of here with your calculated risk song being better than high art. There. You happy? I'm not. Now we can finally talk about the current topic of a best staple in a year needing one. I'd say now is as good a time to talk about perfection. If you don't wanna see me. It's actually not that hard to make a perfect pop song, i.e. a chart song that will not be improved with any changes. It's a song you can hear 4,000 times and still enjoy just as much the first time. Every element on its own could make a song the best of the year, and yet it's just the whole package. This is Blinding Lights, the song that makes my car edge better. It makes the radio 27 times more worthwhile, even for 2020. It made me listen to a great album I would have otherwise ignored. That's a massive part of it too. After Hours set up Blinding Lights to kill the way it did. Cause I'm heartless. Props to Heartless, a good song, also not good enough to be acknowledged for this video, was used as a tool. Bitches, I'm back. Now check this shit out. And now, Save Your Tears has to live in the shadow of this decade-dominating force. It's good enough to be saved for next list season, but come on. Ooh, it's blinded by the blinding lights. His chugging cadence, non-stop energy, and mythical synths 
<coughs> and are almost as good as Sting on me. My favorite is that first line of the chorus. It sounds like he's prepping a Hadouken. Look, that's it. Fuck, this song is so good. I have it on Rock Band. If you don't like this song, I don't even know who you are anymore, man. Number two. I could have put the remix at number nine. I'm one of the greatest, ain't no debate known. But I didn't feel like putting the inferior version on the list. Instead... Come on, dance with me. Have you ever been so into an album that your greatest hope is to see the objectively best song on the album get big? Because the objectively best song on Future Nostalgia inexplicably became a hit. With a little help. And fuck it, that's the reason I'm fine with the remix. It certainly doesn't take a dump on the original. Future Nostalgia was my second favorite pop album of 2020. Only bested by Kesha. Yeah, that's right, I said it. Filled with incredible song after song. But on my scale, there were only two tens. One I'll mention briefly later. The other, Boys Will Be Boys. Levitating is the perfect vocal playground for our leading lady. Fun and effortless as hell. Endlessly memorable melodies for days. If you wanna run away with me, I know a galaxy and I can take you for a ride. You want me, I want you baby. God, that chorus is enough to make me weak in the knees. She controls everyone in three beat with such beautiful conviction, flowing from flawless delivery to the next. Really makes you feel like you're hovering. It's all paced so well too. Every verse puts this perfect pause between each line. I see it's written in the star. We can go wherever. Meter, meter, meter. Complete control. It's this way everywhere. Sledgehammer to the soul. If you're not levitating literally, Dua is here to yank that heart out of your chest like a Warner Brothers cartoon. Lordy, lordy, what a treat. She's wonderful. But where would she be without Kaz? Who's Kaz? Random producer person, very evident from his varying and sporadic catalog of previous production jobs. But the important standouts are IDGAF and Lost in Your Light, two of my favorites from her self-titled debut. And he's back. Space. Do his final frontier. Theming nailed. Levitating might actually be represented by floating through space. I'm sure it's why Kaz made it sound otherworldly. With a baseline pushing its way to the foreground by sheer will and greatness, you'll be truly enjoying Dua's dance moves to their fullest potential. Uh, lyrics. She pulls you in, not by jumping on you, but by enticing you into her warm aura. It even comes down to this album cover. At first glance, she's looking away, but you slowly realize you are her focus. No! She's mine. Space theme mixed with her love-struck talent. It feels like flying. Or something similar to it, if that even exists. And it's fun to pretend I even care what she's saying, since listening to this turns me into a brainwashed do-ite. The greater good. Guys, it's just magic. I feel it in my bones from that perfect intro. Hearing a second makes me drop everything to fully indulge in it. And it's all thanks to you, Remix. Where would we be without that top tier form of music? But seriously. I'm one of the greatest, ain't no debate known. This is like Ariana on My Reign, except all he's got are forgettable ad libs, and we actually know what the song sounds like without him. Better. Uh -uh, let's go. Left foot. Right foot levitating. He's fine, don't get me wrong. Completely out of place, but fine. Whose idea was it to get the heaviest voiced, most braggadocious rapper for the meticulously crafted best song on the fucking album? Cause I don't think Kaz mixed the bass loud enough to pierce through this man's droning. I'm still levitated, I'm heavily medicated, ironic, I gave him- Duel puts so much control over every rhythm and he just slurs his beats. 
Fine on your songs, dude. Not on this masterpiece. The remix is good. The original is perfect. Thanks to said remix, Levitating is a top 10 hit, so I'll be hearing it as much as I heard Don't Start Now the previous 10 months, and I couldn't be happier. Even with you, DaBabe. It's all I could ever need. Now to the honorable mentions. Probably could have gotten this video out last month if I didn't write about 40 songs, but who wants views anyway? The kings had their queens on the throne. This year's honorables are a testament to how insanely good the year was. Would kings and queens have made many of my previous best lists? Easily. In 2020, not good enough. Not good enough. No level of concern. Not fucking good enough. You wanna say so. Quite the fall, but I noticed once it fell out of radio play, I didn't really miss it. That's a perfect reason to take away marks, as opposed to the obvious reason. We want your freedom. Fuck yes, 2020. Don't show up! You know, if I make this an honorable mention here, it's like I gave it a number one by committee math. That's what this song deserves. I'm sorry, milady. This vinyl smells like potpourri. Five out of five. Grew like some kind of infection on me. <coughs> this corner shall do. Best song of the year. You can't convince me otherwise. Do this. Don't stop doing this. You're a shitty rapper. I'll take this forever. A lot of people are calling this a cheap ripoff. Are you seeing a bored to death caliber Travis Barker on other people's songs? I don't think so. All right, fine ex-girlfriend. They're pretty great. Everything Everything's fifth studio album, Reanimator, was a 2020 creation. Not enough bands can withstand success this far into a rock career. Looking at you, Jukebox the Ghost. Arch Enemy was one of those earworms easy to embrace. Great soundtrack, fix your tail physics, and tone it down on the team games. And we can talk about being on my top 40 games of all time. Alright, Devolver? This is my favorite Neon Trees song. Yes, I know that category has intense competition. Danny Gonzalez, still out here killing it. This was the only worthwhile thing about Bieber's 2020. And by thing, I mean dead. This cracks me up every time. This wordplay and flow, chef's kiss. Sipping on the croy, it's much healthier than lean and sprite. I don't know what's going on over there for Danny, but He's killing it. It has been a bomb ass year for sure. I'm going Three out of four hipster corners I've done has featured a killer song, which is pretty amazing considering how blah imagining the Mirage was. Everybody's going crazy. Nothing but thieves are quickly becoming one of my favorite bands. Check out any of their last three albums. They're all great. That's all I do. Pre ordered the EP. I'll tell you how it is when it arrives. Now I wear camouflage to blend in. From bottoms all day. That'll do. Ready for an out of nowhere number one? Don't stop making pounds, DJ number one. Production. It's fucking important. In my vastly important opinion, it's 30 times more important than lyrics. This is a terrible example of that. So let's remember Shaggy's great cheating anthem. But she got me on the counter. Wasn't me. I don't even remember what this song is. I'm too busy singing along like a dumbass. When a song sounds this good, the despicable words don't matter to me. I woke up in. Oh, what's this doing here? Bugger off, you. You audiences don't need to know you like that shit. Ah, much better. Now to say my number one's lyrical impact is lackluster or offensive is not true at all. It's more that I'm completely fine with the words and the production turns my sensibilities into a small dog. And all I do is pull up. Set in the kitchen. 
Let's go! Brand new Lamborghini, fuck a cop car. Seth in the Kitchen's magnum opus, Rockstar, deserves all the accolades, and it was already a number one hit. Who even is this guy? Sure as fuck haven't heard of him before he exploded my brain in 2020 as the background of the largest possible power collab. Poor guy doesn't even have a wiki, so I can't tell you if he's even done anything more than work with the baby, which saddens me to the core. OMG this guitar riff. Holy shit. It's just this for eight bars on repeat. And this was the song I could have heard the riff go on for nine minutes and it'd still be perfect. We get garbage remixes of the Jack Harlow and Ariana Grande hits. Where was the version of this that had 16 guest verses that went on for 10 minutes? I would have eaten that up. And that perfectly delicate intro and outro? <laughs> Guitar works for the rock star portion. But where's that to baby touch we know and love? My God told me to promise you gonna squeeze me. It's the foundation he built all year. A bass line that only sounds like it could have been created with mounted marching basses. With full windmill arm throws. It slams your head through a window. Mutilates your expectations. Breaks down your brain into chunks. It's almost as though writing scripts after work is a bad idea because I ramble and make no goddamn sense. I, I think after this was the part where I took a nap. To say that's it really doesn't sound right, but that's all it took. Seth got in that kitchen and curated some delicious magic for my ears to enjoy. And to think, it's DaBaby's song. His best, actually. He may have been the messenger of a production god, but he led this admirably. It's a little bit repetitive and impossible to sing along to production, so this wonderfully charismatic man makes joining along so easy. Brand new Lamborghini, fuck a cop car. His powerful delivery and cult of personality slots him in perfectly. Imagine a lesser baby trying to spit over this. It would turn him into an actual shitting himself little baby. While I haven't been a fan of Duh, I know only he could have pulled this off. Dropped enough tears to fill up a fucking bus. Therapeutic is how I describe it. Just like Godzilla, it pulls me into a state of awe. That is, if I'm not singing like a big old dumb, which is where Roddy comes in. If he's talking on it, y'all depend, dolls, and take his chin. It's not a better individual effort than high fashion, but it didn't have to be. He's a goddamn rock star, air quotes, for less than a minute, and it's perfect variation from the lead artist. I'll take ten more useless The Boxes to even out this one fantastic assist. He too has me singing every time. It's rare to see yearly power team-ups like this actually be good. But here we are. Even that word. Good. It's insulting. Especially to that pre-chorus. You take your best two seconds of pop music and shove it. These are the best ten seconds of pop music of the last three decades. Both times. The genius of leaving the guitar. Crushing the holy hell out of the rest of it. Both performers break down into humbled humans, and it's real flawless expression. God, dude, we don't deserve this shit. Rockstar is a song that doesn't require a mood or scenario or state of mind. If it's on, it's what I'm listening to. If there's an empty space, it's running through my head. It's unstoppable. If my white ass Cleveland stations had the balls to play it as much as something as crap as Intentions by Bieber, I'd love it more. Rockstar was just a byproduct of the mythically phenomenal year that 2020 was for music. It is the best song of the best year, and we are not worthy. Thank you for waiting for my dumb brain to synthesize my happiness for such great songs, and definitely this one in particular. Here are the patrons. Welcome Nuclear Winter to our family. Hi, Nuclear Winter. Best songs of the last decade is next. I fucking promise. To a better 2021. Too bad Rockstar sucks compared to the actual best song of the year. Don't show up. Do you know why? Don't Start Now single handedly killed the concept of overplay. Who cares that I heard it over a thousand times in passing last year? When every time makes it better and better. 
I was fucking sick of Say So two months after I heard it for the first time. This song crushes bones to make joy. It's so simple. Break your heart breaks itself by being too complicated. Keep your more prominent strings and more complicated rhythms. I didn't need any of that shit. Look at this. Aren't you the guy who tried to hurt me with the word goodbye? Dua establishes the whole picture in one fucking line. She doesn't give a fuck about you. Get out of here with that baby boy nonsense. She is a god who will not bow to your childishness. My queen. If you can simplify a song's perfection to two things and you better believe I'll buy for Rock Band, then we're not stopping at the best song of 2020. We're talking about top 100 songs of all time. It is the best song off Future Nostalgia and that's it. Have a good day. I love you.